I friggin' love and hate Gmail at the same time. Feels weird and the interface is so bleh with stuff all over the place. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of Gmail hacks that I use to tame the Gmail beast and make it work smarter. And I'm gonna start with my pet hate. So you've hit the compose button, you're creating a new message. I hate the fact that you cannot move this around the screen. I wanna read the text behind this message. Yes, I can go full screen or I can hit the shift button, press this little arrow and then it creates a little pop up message. Now you can move this thing around and read the screen behind it. Now I get a lot of emails and some of it I want to keep and some of it obviously I want to delete. Now the ones that I want to keep, I might want to use them to search through them later and I don't want them popping up in my inbox. So instead of using the move to folder with a filter, which of course is its own pain, let me show you a shortcut to do that. So you can see here, I get a lot of emails from the New York Times. Love them, but I don't want them clogging up my inbox. So what I do is right click on the email and then choose mute. They'll still be in my mailbox, but just not in my inbox. If I wanna see all the emails I've put into mute, I go into search, type label, colon mute, and those are the emails I've put into mute. To undo that, right click on that particular email you want to unmute and then choose unmute. Now we all get those emails that we know we need to deal with, but just don't feel like it right now. So check this out. This is where the feature called snooze comes in. Find the email that you wanna deal with later, look at the little clock, click on that, and you can snooze it. Until when, later, tomorrow, next week, you can pick a date and a time. So I'm gonna snooze this email for Monday morning, nine o'clock, click on save, and then I can deal with it at nine o'clock. To see all the emails that you've snoozed, there's a little folder there called snooze and you can see that's the email and I can simply click on it and then select a different date or time or simply unsnooze it. Now in the mess that is the inbox, here is a super simple way to see all the emails you still need to deal with. So in my inbox here, I've got a bunch of unread items and read items. Now I want to find an easy way to sort them. So click on the little gear icon scroll down and then I click on unread first. It then groups all the unread emails together so I can deal with them. And underneath that I get everything else, which is basically uh, everything else. Another way of doing that is you go into your search and then you type is colon unread. And then what it will do is it will show you all the unread items in your mailbox. So a little bit easier way of doing it. And the nice thing is you can exclude promotions from this and you can exclude things like the social, so you can get really, really focused inbox. Now, it's pretty common these days to send large attachment. What we don't realize is just how much storage our Gmail uses up off that free storage that we get when you sign up. So, this is a must know tip. Right, let's compose a new email, and this particular email we wanna send as an attachment. So, I can click on the little paper clip and attach a file. Or there's another option right next to that that looks like a Google Drive. Insert files using Drive. Let me show you the difference. So I'm going to compose this email. I would love your input on this. I'm going to select using Google Drive. And there is a video file. I'm going to click on that. And you can see that video file is over 25 megs. You cannot attach it to an email. So it will be as a link to my Google Drive. So this is a cool way to share big files without actually using up more of your space. Now, what is pretty cool about doing it this way, that if you're working on a document with someone, instead of having a million versions of the same document being emailed back and forth, now everybody can view, edit, or comment on the same document. One version of the truth. Now, in Gmail, you get also to set up a bunch of templates, and that's gonna make replying to email that much faster. Look at this. Okay, this one is actually super useful. So, go into your gears and click on that, then click on the see all settings. And at the top, you wanna to click on the tab that says advanced, click on that. And you can see the second one down is called templates. By default, it's disabled. Turn frequent messages into email templates to save time. I'm gonna enable that. Don't forget to click on save changes. So how do you set this up? Well, let's type in our email. Let's just say this is the same template I use again and again and again. What I'm gonna do is click the three little dots at the bottom, click on templates and then there's an option there called save draft as template and then save new template click on that i want to give it a name uh, you are awesome that sounds like a good name for this template and there it is so now how do you actually use the template well here's an email i want to reply with that template so i open up the email press the reply button three little dots at the bottom click on template and there is my template simply tap on it and there it is now, of course, your templates can be simple like the ones I showed you or have links to documents and forms so it can really help your productivity. And speaking of templates, what about the email signatures? 
this one's also super fun. So I have my email and instead of just at the end of every email, you know, you type your normal stuff. Regards, blah, 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 name, and I've got my link to my YouTube channel. Make it nice and bold. Cool. There's a little pencil there. Click on that pencil and it says, hey, no signature. But if I click on manage signatures, it opens this up. Here is when I click the button called create new signature and then I give a signature a name. I'm going to make this my YouTube signature. Click on create. And then next to it, I can actually paste that particular signature. I can add some more things like, don't forget to subscribe. Good idea. And there is my template. I can also say, hey, when do I, should I use this template? For every new email or just when you reply, you get a whole bunch of options that you can customize. And of course, you can go ahead and create multiple templates. So I've got one for my YouTube. I'm going to have one for my blog, for example. So I click the blog. It's going to have a signature in there. But instead of my link to my YouTube channel, I'm going to link it to the blog. So the techyguy.com. All right. So now I've got two signatures saved and I can swap out between them. Click on Save Changes, and here is how you use it. When you compose a new email, I said by default, use this particular signature. If I want to change it, no problem. Click the little pencil, and then simply swap it out to the other one. Now, I like being on top of things, but I'm also super forgetful. So this feature is great for setting something and forgetting about it. Okay, so I'm talking about the scheduling option. And the scheduling option, the way that I use it is... I send myself a reminder via email to let me know to do something. For example, here is the report that's due today, just a little reminder as a message. I'm not just gonna send this as an email to myself, I'm actually gonna schedule that. So drop down arrow next to the send, click on schedule send, and when do I need this reminder? So tomorrow morning, this afternoon, Monday morning, or I can pick a date and time. Now, yes, I can use a calendar to do exactly the same thing, but when something pops in your mailbox, you tend to access it a little bit better. So you can schedule anything for the future, any date and time. I'm gonna make this at 10 o'clock on Monday. Now to see all the emails that are currently in the schedule, there's a little folder there called scheduled. Click on that and it will tell you what's ready to go at which date and time. Now I use this to remind myself of stuff, but obviously you can schedule it to send emails to anyone at any time. Now, what happens if you want to send a super confidential email to someone and you want to ensure that they only see it and they don't get forward, it doesn't get printed? Well, Gmail has a cool way you do that. All right, let's send my super secret email that I only want one person to see and nobody else. I'm going to title it super secret because that's obvious. Just wanted to let you know that we received the funding and keep this on the download just between us. Let's just say that's the message. At the bottom, click on this little lock thing that looks like a lock. Click on that and it tells you confidential mode. Recipient won't have the option to forward, copy, print, or download this email. That's cool. Set expiration. When does this email expire? I'm gonna expire in one day, one week, one month, five years. Not sure why you need a five year one. And if that's not good enough, you can even add another layer of protection that requires a passcode. So I can have an option, no SMS passcode or SMS passcode. Oh, just a heads up, someone can obviously use their phone to take a picture of the email. So it's not 100% secure, but hey, it's better than nothing. Right, next up, we all do this. We type an email, hit the send button, and then reread the email and go, ah, I wish I could grab that email back. Maybe I mistyped it, put the wrong information in, forgot the attachment. Well, there's a cool solution for that. Okay, so you must have seen this one already. You're trying to send a message, you go compose new message, you type your subject, you type your message, and then you go ahead and you hit the send button. Bottom left-hand side, you'll see message sent with an undo or a view message option but it disappears pretty darn quickly. That's five seconds. That's the default for the undo, but we can extend that. Click on the gear icon, click on see all settings, and when that comes up under general, you'll see undo send. Now you can send cancellation period at 30 seconds. Why five seconds? Five seconds too quick to make a decision. 30 seconds is plenty. Click on save changes, and now when you save your blah, blah, blah email, You'll see message sent, undo still remains there, still remains there, still remains. That's enough time to go view the message and actually click the undo if you need to. Now using this, hopefully you can prevent some of those oopsies from happening. Okay, so what happens when you cannot access Gmail? Let's say you're on a plane or in an area with no internet access. Well, all you gotta do is enable this. Right, what you wanna do is you're gonna go into your gear icon, click on see all settings, and when that pops up at the very, very top, you're going to have something called offline. 
click on that. Right when that pops up, there's a little tick box that you can put into enable offline mail. But you need to make some decisions. So firstly, you need to make sure that, of course, you have enough hard drive space to handle all your mails. In my case, on this test account, it's only 16 megs out of the storage. So I've got storage. Now, sync settings. How many days of mail do you want synchronized from Gmail down to your computer? And do you want to download all the attachments? Then, next up, so type of security. Do you want to keep your offline data on your computer? Or is the data going to be removed whenever you're able to reconnect back? Now, to access your mail when you're in offline mode, all you're going to have to do is open up the browser and go to mail.google.com. And after all of that, if you still don't want to live your email life inside Gmail, then just do this. So what happens if you want the power of Gmail but without having to actually access Gmail? Well, you can do that. Click on the gear icon, click on see all settings, and then choose the option forwarding and pop IMAP. Click on that. Now, three options. Each one underneath has got the learn more so you can see what they're all about. Forwarding, pop download, IMAP access. You can actually use your Outlook or other clients to access your Gmail so you don't actually have to live on this website. I like this option. Add a forwarding address. So any email coming to my Gmail will automatically be forwarded to my other email. So click on add forwarding. You've got to confirm and verify that you actually own that second mailbox. Otherwise, you can just use this for spam, which nobody wants. Once you do that, I can click forward all emails to this email address. And then I can choose. I can keep copies of my Gmail in my inbox. I can delete them, archive them do what I want, but this way I get full control and the power of Gmail. Now that you know how to do this, check out these seven websites that you should absolutely know about. YouTube thinks you should watch this video right over here. Hit the head, I think it's here. Hit the head here to subscribe because you're awesome and I'll see you in this video or this video or I'll see you in both. Let's go.